Returning to feature focus this week, we're gonna talk about filters. We talk about field mode, and we're talking about custom content image creation in Forensic Toolkit. Thanks for coming back this week. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to Future Focus. I am Justin Tolman. I'm the Director of Training over North America for Access Data and Xtero Company. And one question that I get a lot is, can you save your custom content settings within FTK Imager so that I can have that pre-configured and just make the same custom content image over and over again? Yes and no. We talked about this a little bit way back in episode one. But as long as you don't close the application of FTK Imager, your custom content sources will remain in the application and you can switch images out. So technically you could open up Imager, configure your custom content sources and just never close it down, constantly bringing in your images and running that same one over and over again. However, in this episode, we're gonna show you how to use Forensic Toolkit and filters to create custom content images in the same way but with a lot more power. Jumping into FTK, let's talk about field mode and why we care about it for this discussion. One of the reasons you may be creating a custom content image is you only care about certain types of files uh, for your investigation, whether it be documents, graphics, PDFs, emails, whatever the case may be, uh, you don't wanna see anything else, or maybe uh, the investigation only needs those things, and especially you are going to transfer that to maybe a less technical user, somebody who's just gonna click through and look at the files, so you don't want them to be cluttered with all the OS stuff and deeper dive forensics like registry and event logs and link files and all that sort of stuff that sure are important, but maybe you're in a more of a review mode. Field mode allows you to bring an image into FTK with no processing, and so it's really quick. It's not gonna spend any time. So looking at my screen, I've selected on the case creation options field mode, and you can see that pretty much everything is turned off except for include deleted files. So we're not gonna do any processing. We're just loading it in so we can see the files. So for example, I brought in two images into FTK using field mode, conspiracy take eight and winsync.e01. Now, these are not the largest images. You can see down at the bottom, it's about 1.3 million files. And this took about six minutes to bring into the case. So you've got enough time to go refill your drink and by the time you get back, it's gonna be done. Now, since we did field mode, nothing's really processed. We can do manual look through, click through. This is basically, for lack of a better term, uh, imager on steroids at this point, okay? So we need to keep that in mind as we move to the next step where we talk about filtering. We're going to create filters to return only the types of files that we want. This will take a little bit of work up front because you're gonna have to figure out, okay, what files do I want? You're gonna have to build a filter to support those files and to return only those files, but it's a one-off time sink. What you can do to save even more time is come up to manage, go to filters, manage filters, select the filter that you create, and then copy to shared. And what this is going to do is save it to the database so that it's now available every time you open up FTK going forward. One thing you need to remember when you're building your filter though is that you loaded it up in field mode. So when we click on edit and take a look at our options, we have to choose very basic things to identify our files because you're not going to have some of the processing options that you might want to filter on to get the information. For example, in the first row here, the first rule, I set geotagged latitude attribute exists because I may want only images that have GPS information on them so that I can map them, uh, do, do things like that, okay? But we loaded it in field mode, so the latitude, longitude, that GPS information won't be parsed, okay? So you're not gonna be able to do that. What you can do instead is bring in something like file category is a member of JPEG EXIF. And that'll get you part way down the road. It's gonna, again, get rid of a bunch of other stuff uh, that you may not want if you only want images that have possible map data. The other rules here, I just picked at random. Of course, you can choose to configure things however you want. Hey, 
just interrupting real quick. I didn't like how I described what was going on here. But basically, these other things are just there as an example. You can pause it to see some examples of different filters that you can run. Um, I ran some on file category, some on extension. I embedded another filter and ran one on name. And there's a bunch of other stuff that you could do, such as path, etc. Okay, so pause it if you want to take a look at some examples. But remember, you just have to keep your filters basic because you didn't do any processing. That's the takeaway here. Great. Back to it. So with our evidence loaded in on the explore tab, we can quick pick everything shows that we have a bunch of stuff loaded. Okay. All the evidence, 1.3 million files. We can click on our filter, come down to common file image creator, and we'll run that filter. Okay. And we are down to 5,000 approximate files. That's way less than what we had. So with these files listed, we're ready to create our custom content image. We can right click anywhere in the file list pane. We can go to export image. We're going to do all listed and we'll say, okay. We're going to click to add a destination, give it your case information. So we'll call this feature focus, uh, whatever. 81, we also support LO1 output if you're going to say relativity or some other tool that prefers LO1, you can do that. We're going to specify a folder, we'll just throw it on the desktop and we'll give it a file name of feature, feature focus demo and we'll click OK and we'll click start. If you want to save more time, don't click the pre-calculate statistics. The feature works, it's, it's great. It's going to finish when it finishes for a custom content image. Just run it. You're loading in field mode, trying to create the smaller image to kick off, to get to somebody else, to hurry up and get your review. So you process less things. You're in time saving mode. It's just not a feature you may want to run. Once the image finishes, it'll verify, get the green bars. You're good to go. Close that out. We'll add that back into imager really quick just to take a look at it. And once it's in, we can expand it out and we get our files that we could click through and take a look at users, bloopy, app data, local roaming, so on and so forth. Pictures, we got some JPEGs in here. Great. So you have this smaller image, just under four gig, just under 5,000 files, a lot easier to go through. It's the common files that we specified in our filter, just some JPEGs, some documents. You're, it's ready for reviewers to go through, bookmark, label, etc. And it's a saved filter within FTK that's available to you in field mode, thus saving time. Kick it out, you're ready to go. All right, that wraps up this week's feature focus. Thanks for watching. And again, we'll be at Techno here in a few weeks. We will be running a course called FTK Investigations where we teach workflows and stuff, kind of connecting all the different things together. It's a custom course only offered at Techno. So if you want to get in on that, we'll be there. And I'm going to be releasing some new videos outside of the feature focus, uh, deeper dives into forensics that are less tool focused, more forensic artifact focused, just because I think that's fun. And so if you're interested in that, subscribe here. I'm going to be dropping some new and different types of stuff here. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.